One of the best things about Freemasonry is that you really do get to meet people from all walks of life who you would never have had a chance to meet if it were not for the Masonic fraternity. I'm Maynard Edwards, 32nd degree KCCH, Scottish Rite Freemason, and one of the cool things I get to do is interview some of those really interesting Scottish Rite Masons that I come across as part of the Tyler's Place podcast. It's a podcast by Masons for Masons available wherever you listen to podcasts and it's linked above and linked below here on our YouTube channel. By the way, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and drop a comment below and above all, if you would please pass it on to some friends, it really does help us out. An interesting interview I did for the podcast just a couple of days ago was with Brother Herb Benevant. Brother Herb just recently became a Scottish Rite Freemason, and he is a dentist, he's a sailor, and he's a YouTuber, and possibly one of the most interesting guys I've ever had a chance to speak with. The entire interview is available at the Tyler's Place podcast channel, again, link below and above, but I thought I would share a little bit of the interview with you here on YouTube. Born in Puerto Rico, uh, family's been in Puerto Rico since it was a Spanish colony, and then we became Americans with the Spanish-American War, and then uh, like every generation, we'd always go up to Maryland, go to dental school, and then go back to Puerto Rico. Now, why Maryland? Uh, really good dental school. My sister came up to to go to dental school, and then she was up there for the first semester. Came so you just whole family. How many generations does dentistry go back in your family? Uh, three, and then wow. but my great grandfather was a pharmacist who also went to Maryland. So my sister came up was you know first semester came back to puerto rico for thanksgiving and just looked at the island and was like you guys need to leave like the economy's it wasn't doing very well and this was back in 2005 and then 2006 we uh we moved to the maryland so we moved to maryland because the plan i was going to go to dental school as well so we thought hey if we live in the state you know in-state tuition Right. That's why. Was, was there a lot of pressure on you to become a dentist there, or was that just you wanted to be like your dad? There wasn't pressure. So I, all right, the, the thing that did it, I saw, I can't remember which movie it was, but the dentist was like the evil, scary guy. And I looked at my dad and grandpa. I'm like, they're not scary. Like I was confused. And then uh, I was just in the office watching and this lady, uh, well, you know, when you're a kid and like something's like uh, very dramatic and like yeah, catches yeah. you and it's like, yeah, yeah. It just, almost traumatizing so this very large woman in a big red dress she's just freaking out because she's gonna get a tooth pulled and she's telling my dad the whole time about how she's scared and like worried and all this mess while she's talking away he uh pulls a tooth on her and then she's like doctor when are you gonna start and he's like here's your tooth and like with that it's like oh it, it's not scary like people don't have to feel pain and it's just that did it so that that hit you is that yeah this, so is, this I, I is something six. you can do to help people yeah, like you don't have to be scary and like you can help people and you can you can do it in a way that's like really good. So, uh, yeah, at six, I was like, I want to be a dentist. That's and really, really cool. Yeah. So then the, the funny part is uh, in Puerto Rico, we don't have those uh, Christmas movies that they have right. in the States, like the Rudolph one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So moved to Maryland. I'm at UMBC and I'm taking an accounting class and I, I go by Herbie as well. It just hit me. Yes. So I'm in accounting and, you know, it's the whole introduce yourself on the first day and everyone wants to be a CPA or something. And she gets to me and I'm like, I'm Herbie and I want to be a dentist. Do you mind telling me what you do want to do? Well, sir, someday I'd like to be a, a dentist. A dentist? And the whole class lost it. Yeah. And the teacher's like, oh, Herbie wants to be a dentist. And I'm like, what? So, um... Let's talk a little bit about uh, Freemasonry. Is is there a family connection to Freemasonry? Yeah, uh, my great grandfather's Mason. Uh, my mom's dad was a Mason. Oh wow! Like it was all through the line. And then uh, I was interested. And then my dad and I joined together. And then so we joined in Puerto Rico, and then moved to Maryland while we were still in our first degree. And then it was a lot of paperwork, logistics yeah, for bet. Palestine I to bet. get that sorted out. So we were raised in Maryland. And then became members of Palestine Lodge. Where does the sailboat come into all of this that you and your wife decide to go on this somewhat crazy journey? The the less romantic side of the story is I'm in dental school. All my friends are buying houses and literally can't afford to go buy lunch. Like, it's like, oh, let's go eat at this restaurant. I'm like, I'm broke. And I'm like, I want to buy a boat. If I buy a house, it'll take forever to be able to buy a boat. So I'll just buy a bigger boat and live on that and not buy a house. And, you know, house money for a boat. And then, uh, yeah, so like all through dental school, I, I was reading about how to sail because I'd never actually sailed before, but I wanted to live on a sailboat. And then I uh, 
Man, you are a, you are a yeah. risk taker because yeah. <laughs> I mean, have you had you been on a sailboat to that point in time? I've been. I used to windsurf in Puerto Rico. Okay, but so that's I, not a sailboat. That's no, not living not on a all. sailboat. Like Nothing. you never slept on a sailboat to this point. No. Yeah. So I was like, I want to get a boat, and the problem was at the time gas prices were four bucks a gallon. Sure. So I'm like, I can't afford a powerboat because I can't run the thing. Right. So wind is free. Uh, the joke is, you know, sailing is the most expensive way to get somewhere for free. So I will bet. Yeah. Yeah. So. I learned how to sail by reading and then took a weekend course to kind of like piece stuff together, make sure that, you know, I'm not going to kill myself. And then my third time sailing, I brought my boat across the bay with, wow. uh, with my parents who had never been on a sailboat. So that was now, interesting. Now, how does your wife come into this? Because ah, I, I'm just trying to figure yeah. how, how do you make this pitch to a lady? Hey, hey girl, I can't afford lunch. I'm not going to buy a house. We're going to get a boat instead. Yeah. And uh, I mean, how, how does so, you bring me up to speed on that? So the way that works is one of my dad's friends who still wants to buy a boat. He, his wife doesn't want a boat. And he said, get your boat first. It comes into a relationship as baggage. If you get your boat after, you know, then you have to get permission. Sure. So I was dating a girl and she was all for the idea of living on a boat. And she thought that was cool. And then I found the boat and showed her pictures. I'm like, I found the boat. And she's like, oh, I thought this was like a phase. You're going to grow out of or something. <laughs> well, so, she said, mirror the boat. So easy choice. Got the boat. Sure. I, I, <laughs> so I, then I, had the boat and uh, uh, I, I was online dating. My wife was my first date on Tinder. And uh, she, uh, she was like, do you live with roommates? And I said, no, actually. And then I just confessed everything. Like, I live on a sailboat. I'm a weirdo. Like, I want to go sail around the world. And uh, she was like, that's interesting. Came to the boat and stayed. And she moved in on the second date. Wow. So, so she was your first and last Tinder date. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Wild. I know. That it was, is a romantic it was really good. Story. That's a yeah. really romantic story. So, but then, so she was on this mission to get me off the boat. Like, she wanted to get me on land. So she tried looking at condos and houses and all this. And I'm like, no, like, we're doing the boat. And it took her about a year of misery to then start liking it. And I asked a neighbor of mine who he's happily married for like 15 years on his boat. And I was like, how do you get your wife to like it? He's like, oh, no, she still hates it. I just won't leave. I'm like, that's not the answer I'm looking for. <laughs> so, yeah. So then like when we started sailing around, like we do trips in the bay and my wife, like she really started loving the sailing and the travel of it. So then she actually decided, let's go cruising. And then the plan was, so we got married and we were going to sail from Maryland to Puerto Rico and back in nine months. And five years later, we're not Still back yet. It. Yeah. Still doing it. We started the YouTube channel when we started sailing uh, as like just a video journal for ourselves. And then people started watching and subscribing and we started growing. And it was kind of like supplemental because like we'd sail for like two, three months and then I'd come back and work for a couple months and we'd make our money to sail further. Right. Uh, and we did that for like the first four years. And then uh, we made it all the way to Spain, had a bad storm, decided instead of sailing around Europe, we'll just rent a van and drive through Europe in the winter. And then in the spring, we'll you know, set sail again. And we made it all the way to Austria and then the lockdown. But we weren't looking at news or anything, so we had no idea that COVID existed. And we're just on a Sound of Music tour. And our tour guide's just freaking out because the borders are closing for the first time since the EU was founded. And the world was going to burn in flames right, yeah. and everything we're like all right panic ensues yeah so we thought okay we'll just go up onto that pretty mountain camp out for a week come down after people come down because you know, two week lockdown it's fine we come down after a week and things were different so once the borders opened up we drove back to spain and then uh made our way back to the side of the u.s or the side of the world yeah and and documented all this on your youtube channel which is the rigging doctor the neat part with masonry though we're traveling around. We go to different areas. We see lodges. We start sure. visiting lodges. And then when we went international, we're living in the Azores for 10 months. And we'd been there for about six months at this point. And I'm looking at the town like, there's masons here somewhere. And then there's this old obelisk. And it's got a little tiny plaque next to it with a square and compass. I'm like, there's definitely masons here. So I started searching. And uh, I found them. And apparently I was the first American to ever find them. And I'm like, that's because you're so hidden. Right. <laughs> but... And then that just opened up like this whole another side of the travel of just, you know, visiting lodges over in Europe and like we're in one country and we're going to the next one. They like put us in contact with the brothers there. So when we arrive, uh, it's it, that's been really amazing. In Baltimore, you got your Scottish right degrees. What are your thoughts on, on that? What, what are your takeaway from some of that? Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I should have done it sooner. When we were crossing the Atlantic the first time and we were literally sailing east. 
and just you know so we're um, you know traveling to the east and uh but just being out there like if there if anyone ever has any doubt of god or like creation or anything go out in the ocean (laughs) spend the month at sea and it's just it's so beautiful it's it's amazing and when i was out there i was like i need to go through the scottish right Brother Herb, we are sure glad that you joined us in the Scottish Rite. Proud to call you my brother and hope we can keep track of your travels as you continue your journey, not only through Freemasonry, but your journey around the world with your lady as well. Thanks for watching here on YouTube. Again, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. And above all, hey, drop a comment below. Shout out your lodge. Shout out to Brother Herb. And while you're at it, pop on over to The Rigging Doctor and check out their YouTube channel as well. I'm Maynard Edwards, 32nd degree, KCCH, Scottish Ray Freemason. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're watching this video and you want to learn how to become a Freemason, click this video right here and it's going to give you a step-by-step process to follow on how to connect with a Masonic Lodge. And if you're already a Master Mason interested in joining the Scottish Rite, click this link right here and it's going to take you to the Scottish Rite website where you can sign up to become a Scottish Rite Mason right now.